Welcome to Explain, a series of health education programs published by the Patient Education Institute, the leading provider of interactive health education. This video includes general medical information and does not replace the medical advice of your doctor or healthcare provider. If you have questions pertaining to your medical condition, ask your doctor or healthcare provider. Aphasia Introduction Aphasia is a disorder that makes it hard to use or understand language. It happens as a result of damage to the brain. The severity of aphasia depends on the location and extent of the brain damage. A brain infection, injury, or tumor can produce aphasia. A stroke or dementia can also cause it. This program explains the symptoms, causes, and treatment of aphasia. It also includes information about health complications related to the condition. The brain. The brain is the command center of the body. It controls the five senses as well as the ability to speak and move. The brain has two main parts called the left and the right hemispheres. Each hemisphere has areas for movement, thinking, sensations, and feelings. If you injure your brain, different functions can be affected. In general, the left side of the brain has specialized language areas. Damage to this part of the brain can affect your ability to read, write, understand, and talk. This type of disorder is known as aphasia. Aphasia Aphasia is a symptom that results from damage to the parts of the brain that are responsible for language. These are usually areas on the left side or hemisphere of the brain. Aphasia usually happens suddenly. It often happens because of a stroke or head injury. It may also develop slowly if it is caused by a brain tumor, an infection, or dementia. Aphasia impairs the expression and comprehension of language. It also affects reading and writing. Anyone can develop aphasia, even children, but the majority of those with aphasia are middle-aged or older. Both men and women can have aphasia. Many people develop aphasia as the result of a stroke. There are three main types of aphasia. 1. Expressive, non-fluent aphasia, also known as Broca's aphasia. 2. Receptive, fluent aphasia, also known as Wernicke aphasia. 3. Global aphasia. Expressive or non-fluent aphasia is also called Broca's aphasia. It happens when the left frontal area of the brain is damaged. This area of the brain is part of the language network. People with non-fluent aphasia have trouble speaking. They struggle with words and may only speak in short sentences. They may leave words out of a sentence, but they do understand spoken language. People with non-fluent aphasia might say, Shop mall today to mean they want to go shopping at the mall, or want TV to mean they want to watch TV. The sentences aren't complete and the words may not be clear. Receptive or fluent aphasia is also known as Wernicke aphasia. It happens when the middle or temporal part of the left side of the brain is damaged. People with this type of aphasia may use complex sentences that don't make sense to the listener. They may say the wrong words or use words that aren't needed. People with fluent aphasia often have trouble understanding spoken language well. They may not know that other people have trouble understanding the things that they say. Global aphasia happens after the language network of the brain suffers widespread and severe damage. Often, the front and middle regions of the left hemisphere of the brain are damaged. People with global aphasia are very limited in their ability to speak and understand language. Sponsored by the Patient Education Institute. www.patient-education.com Over 5,000 videos and interactive tutorials. Causes Damage to the language areas of the brain causes aphasia. This often happens because of a stroke. Strokes happen when a blood vessel in the brain bursts or when blood is not able to reach a part of the brain. 
Strokes can cause brain cells to die. Other causes of brain injury leading to aphasia are severe blows to the head, brain tumors, brain infections, other conditions that affect the brain. Diagnosis Aphasia is often first recognized by the healthcare provider who treats the person for his or her brain injury. This is often a neurologist. The healthcare provider usually does tests that require the person to follow commands, answer questions, name objects, carry on a conversation. A person with aphasia is often referred to a speech language pathologist. This healthcare provider will fully examine the person's communication abilities. A full examination includes the person's ability to speak, express ideas, converse socially, understand language, read and write. The exam also looks at the patient's ability to use alternative and augmentative communication, or AAC. AAC relies on methods of communication other than oral speech to express a person's needs or ideas. Facial expressions, gestures, symbols, and pictures are all forms of AAC that everyone uses in addition to words. Treatment Some people with aphasia recover fully without treatment. This type of recovery usually happens after a type of stroke in which blood flow to the brain is temporarily stopped but quickly restored. In cases like this, the person's language abilities may come back within hours or days. Many people recover partially from aphasia without treatment. This is when some language abilities return days or weeks after the brain injury. But these people usually do not recover completely. They often still have some symptoms of aphasia. For most people with aphasia, it takes time to recover language skills. Recovery normally continues over the course of two years. Most people don't fully recover all of their previous language abilities, but speech-language therapy can help people communicate effectively. Treatment is most effective when started early. The amount of improvement varies based on the cause and extent of brain damage, the part of the brain affected, the person's health and age. Additional factors include motivation and educational level. Therapy helps a person with aphasia communicate effectively. This is done by helping him or her to use remaining language abilities, restore language abilities as much as possible, compensate for language problems, learn other ways to communicate. One-on-one -on -one therapy addresses the needs of an individual while group therapy happens in a small group. Group therapy encourages people with aphasia to practice communication using their new skills. Stroke clubs are regional support groups made up of people who have had a stroke. They are available in most major cities. These clubs also offer the chance for people with aphasia to try new communication skills. Stroke clubs can help entire families adjust to the life changes that accompany stroke and aphasia. Family involvement is often an important part of aphasia treatment. It helps family members learn the best way to communicate with their loved one. It is also important to allow people with aphasia plenty of time to talk. Help the person become involved socially outside the home. Computer-assisted therapy can help people with aphasia retrieve certain parts of speech, such as verbs. Coping and support Aphasia can affect a person's relationships, daily functioning, and employment. It can also affect their quality of life. If you are affected by aphasia, there are certain things you can do to help improve your quality of life. If you are a friend or family member of someone with aphasia, there are also things you can do to help your loved one communicate. Try carrying a card explaining that you have aphasia. The card should also explain what aphasia is. You can show it to people when you meet them to help them understand your needs. Always carry an identification card wherever you go. Keep the contact information of your significant others with you whenever you leave your home. Doing this can help others assist you should you need it. 
Carry a pencil and paper with you at all times. This may help you to express an idea in writing if you can't say it aloud. You may also carry pictures, diagrams, or drawings to show people what you want to say. Many people with aphasia communicate non-verbally. They can use hand gestures or point to objects. There are also certain things that friends and family members of people with aphasia can do to help their loved one communicate. The following are tips for communicating with a person with aphasia. Family members are encouraged to simplify language, use short, simple sentences, repeat key words or write them down as needed. Avoid talking to the person like a child. Keep your tone and pace natural for a conversation with an adult. Turn off the TV, a loud radio, and other distractions if you can. Family members should also keep including the person with aphasia in the conversation by asking for their input. Show appreciation for their ideas and opinions. Encourage communication in any way the person likes, whether by talking, pointing, making gestures, or drawing pictures. Not correct the person's speech. If you like this video, please like and share. For similar videos, subscribe to our channel. Summary Aphasia is a disorder that makes it hard to use or understand language. It happens as a result of damage to the brain. The severity of aphasia depends on the location and extent of the brain damage. A brain infection, injury, or tumor can produce aphasia. A stroke or dementia can also cause it. Many people recover partially from aphasia without treatment. This is when some language abilities return days or weeks after the brain injury. But these people usually do not recover completely. They often still have some symptoms of aphasia. For most people with aphasia, it takes time to recover language skills. Recovery normally continues over the course of two years. Most people don't fully recover all of their previous language abilities, but speech-language therapy can help people communicate effectively. Treatment is most effective when started early. Aphasia can affect a person's relationships, daily functioning, and employment. It can also affect their quality of life. If you are affected by aphasia, there are certain things you can do to help improve your quality of life. If you are a friend or family member of someone with aphasia, there are also things you can do to help your loved one communicate. Family members should Keep including the person with aphasia in the conversation by asking for their input. Show appreciation for their ideas and opinions. Encourage communication in any way the person likes, whether by talking, pointing, making gestures, or drawing pictures. Not correct the person's speech. Thank you for using Explain.